Hello and welcome to part two of Hot Pixel Productions' introduction to luminosity masking. And once again, my name is Gerald Bellino. Carrying on from part one, what I said we would now do, that after we had learned how to create our luminosity channels, that we were then going to look at the ways that we could then um, use those channels to create custom luminosity uh, masks to be used in conjunction with adjustment layers. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, as you can see here, we have a different image. And what I've done is run my GB actions as I mentioned in the last video that I created a custom set of actions that would generate all of the lights uh, channels, all of the darks channels and all of the midtone channels which is what I've got here and you can see. So let us just say that I want to um, perhaps maybe bring a little bit more punch into these clouds up in the sky and possibly the ones down in the reflection. So what I want to do is I want to start going through my lights masks and assessing which of these masks is going to give me enough latitude yet constraint to be able to just target the, the, the lights within this selection and these clouds and at the same time not affecting any of the other areas around it. And by the looks of things I reckon that lights 3 is going to do a pretty good job of that. So this is what you need to do in order to create a mask from this channel. You simply just on a Mac command click on it and that will make the selection. On a PC you would press control click. Now with our marching ants visible all you need to do is however you instantiate or create your layer mask either through the half and half cookie here at the bottom of the levels panel or like I do I just use the adjustment icons which you know same thing but just represented as icons. I am now going to create a levels adjustment layer and when I do it will automatically generate a mask from that selection. Now we're seeing red here that's because the channel's mask has actually also been turned on. You just need to come across select that uh, channel and click on the eyeball to hide it. So now let me just option click on this layer mask to bring it up onto the screen and what you can see what we've done here and this is what makes luminosity masking so powerful in terms of its accuracy we have just created a pixel for pixel duplication of this channel and created a mask from it no other way that you would ever be able to create such an accurate targeted mask than through this process so with this mask now in place what we can now do is begin to make whatever adjustments we want so I basically want to you know, start punching the white in there so it's a couple of ways we could go about doing it I could either switch over the blending mode of that layer to screen which I know will give added extra lightness and punch to things and it has done if I just toggle that on and off you can see the way that that's just punched the white in those clouds and at the same time has not affected any other area of this image owing to it being protected by the black of that mask. Now similarly let me just uh, switch that back over to normal we could just start playing around with our actual adjustment. Layer. So that's one way of doing it and that is to as I say you just command click on a Mac, control click on a PC on any one of these channels in order to create a selection. Let me just delete this so we can just do it one more time. Let's take a darks 2. I'm clicking on the darks 2 just to select it. Now I'm going to go on the Mac command click. That's going to create the selection. I'm going to come up to my levels icon, click on that and bingo. Let's turn that off. It's now created a darks. Let me see. Let's change that over to multiply. Uh, it's kind of done a very good job of turning everything to black but again don't forget this is a layer this is a layer mask we can dial that back by changing its, in its opacity to taste and this is the power and control we now have over the adjustments on this particular adjustment layer let's look at another way that we can use these uh, channels and masks together on an adjustment layer and this is kind of what I call stenciling and this is what I mean by that let's just add a levels adjustment now I want to bring a lot more contrast into these clouds and I'm going to do that by bringing down the midpoint and bringing up my white point now we toggle that on and off 
yeah, I mean, that looks great in the clouds, but obviously everything else has uh, been affected by that adjustment. So I'm now going to command I on a Mac, control I on a PC to invert that so it changes it to black and conceals that adjustment from being present. What I'm now going to do, I'm going to come back to my lights 3. Ah, they say lights 2. No, nope, lights 3. Sorry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my light screen. I'm going to make a selection. Now, with that selection visible, I am now going to make this selection target this layer mask. What I'm now going to do is that I'm now going to hide the marching ants by going Command H. So they're gone. They're still active. Right, go away. But they're not visible on the screen, getting in the way. And what I can now do, as I say, the reason why I call this a stencil, like a stenciling approach, is as I think you can start to surmise, you know what a stencil is. Obviously, you cut out, you know, a shape from a piece of paper or card. You get a can of spray paint and you spray through that stencil, and the wall behind or whatever it is you you know you've got behind that stencil will get covered with the um, with the paint, and what isn't will be masked by the stencil. That's exactly what we're going to do here, and that's exactly how we're going to use this layer mask. So now what I'm going to do with the marching ants hidden is now select a brush with white paint and use that selection like a stencil to start painting through and target just the areas that it's going to let me that it's going to reveal. So let me start painting over that with 100% and you can see and the more I do the more I'm burning through me option click and you can see that that selection has acted just like a stencil and allowed me to spray through it just to reveal certain portions of that adjustment now it may be that that's all a bit weird so I can just start going back down here obviously it got a bit too dark and I just maybe want to punch the whites a bit more well maybe not that much and I'm blowing them out there let's just bring that down a bit uh, forget this is a tutorial and this is not actually a piece I'm working on but again with this highlighted and spraying white paint through that mask it's allowing that adjustment to come through and act like a stencil and allowing the adjustment to come through while still hiding all the other areas and not allowing that adjustment to affect any other areas of that image so uh, that's another what, cool way of using these adjustment layers. Now what I want to quickly show you is a technique known as masking the mask and this is what it basically is. Again another way you have even more control over the amount of presence you're allowing through of a certain adjustment. So let's let, let's go to lights too. I'm going to command click on a Mac, control click on the PC on the lights too layer to bring up our selection. Just going to throw on an adjustment layer turn off our mask on the channel. Now what I'm going to do is start bringing everything down. What we can now do again is do this technique that's known as masking the mask and in order to do that what we need to do is to put this adjustment layer into a container or also known as a group and there are two ways of doing that. You can either click and drag it bring it down onto the little folder icon down here next to the uh, adjustment layer icon and that will create a little folder and it'll just automatically call it group one so you can name it whatever you want but once this is now housed in this container or group now what I'm going to do is I'm now just going to add a layer mask to that group folder and this is going to allow me to paint just like on any other layer with black select my brush with black to mask away and hide any of the adjustments I don't want to have showing through. And as you can see if I option click on that, that's what I've done. Now if I dis if I come down here now if I click on this mask and control click on it and disable it, you can see the effect that that mask was actually having on the image. I'll re-enable it again 
And there you have it. And again, we can just bring down its opacity if we want even further control. So, that's another very cool little technique again to give you added control over the amount of adjustment that you um, are allowing to show through onto the stage. So let's just delete that and add a black layer mask by option clicking on the add layer mask icon and that obviously immediately obliterates everything and hides it and then obviously by swapping over our black brush to a white brush we can start painting over and revealing through the mask by painting white on it. Command Z to undo that or what else we can do we can click again on the mask command click on it control click on it on a PC target our group mask hide our marching ants and once again use that selection as a stencil through which to paint very 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 targeted localized adjustment on before after so few cool ways there of uh, using uh, the channel luminosity channels to create masks both as an instantiated mask as part of an adjustment layer or as a stencil on top of an adjustment layer mask to be able to reveal or conceal different parameters or different portions of an adjustment. Right, now what I would like to do is just uh, quickly show you how we can use luminosity masks for a, a fairly common technique which is to blend two exposures together to create one composite image. Now as is very often the case when shooting um, landscape at uh, any given time of the day, um, high dynamic range is probably going to go to go against you in, in terms of being able to, to, to capture it in a single shot so more often than not what most photographers will do will, will be to take one exposure to get say like a foreground and the uh, the midground and then do another expo exposure to get more contrast and more drama um, happening in the sky which is all well and good because then but unfortunately then what happens is obviously you lose all the foreground so this is all we're going to do we're going to run all our luminosity mask select an appropriate channel that's going to give us the best contrast between the horizon and the sky and then use that to be able to blend the two exposures together. Now I'm just going to run, I'm just going to click on my GB actions to run all our luminosity channels and in they come. I love automation. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start filtering, toggling quickly through all of my layers, see which is going to give me the best contrast of black and white black on the foreground and white on the sky to be able to create this blending mask and I don't know I just have to tell you not anything's really doing it for me right now except for mid three I think could give us the best shot at this but what I think I would need to do would be to adjust this channel further in order to create better contrast between the horizon and the sky and this is how I would go about doing it I would click on this and uh, then I would press control click on a Mac and right click to duplicate the channel and I'm going to call this sky high contrast spell it right contrast now that's going to th thrown this right down to the bottom here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the sky high contrast our duplicate layer come up to image adjustments down to curves and what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this through altering the black point and the white point of this curves adjustment to blacken down that foreground and really blow out that sky it's also showing me I've got some really nice sensor, <laughs> sensor dust spots on here as well which I'll have to go and take care of later but that's not a bad start. What I now want to do is quickly tidy up this sky in terms of taking it to pure white. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to load my brush with white. Command B, load it 
make sure it's at 100%, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the brushes blending mode from normal to overlay and then just wipe away the rest of that grey. So I've now got a pretty decent sky mask there. So now all I need to do is to click on my dark layer throw on option click on the layer, add layer mask so it adds a black one and completely conceals it and now to come down to my sky high contrast control uh, sorry command click on it to bring up the selection and go and click and target this layer mask and again use our stenciling approach I need to swap my brush back over from overlay to normal I'm going to change its opacity to 50% by pressing 5, the number 5 on my keyboard and I'm just going to start painting through that mask. I also, uh, it's not very complicated but I will hide the marching ants by going command H. Always remember to do that but always remember you've got them active. 50% is actually going to be pretty strong and I really want to ramp that back off. I want to cool my jets on that. I want to take that back down to 20% as I start to get close to the horizon because that is always the challenge when you try and do these blends these exposure blends is to get a lovely smooth and convincing transition between the sky and the horizon sometimes if you go way too dark on the, on, on the exposure of the sky and you know the, the horizon is still too, it's still too light that's when it can get really weird and phony looking so you know taking the time and some deft subtle touches down here to blend this in you don't have to worry so much at the top but when you start coming down to the horizon line and also similarly you don't want to get that weird kind of light white ghosting on the edge of that horizon which sometimes happens if you fall short of the mark in terms of bringing down the exposure close enough to the horizon and you know I think what I can do is then go back and just go back to 100% on my brush to bring in possibly a little bit more darkness up there in the sky or what I could alternative what I could do I could just change to my gradient tool have it filled with white going to transparent and over the top of that just allow the gradient to do that ramping off and so you can see there maybe just bring it down a little bit more like that there you go something like that okay but again what we did was we created from a channel mask we created a custom mask based off that one with much greater contrast that was going to allow us the ability to bring those blend those two exposures together into a uh, composite image that would now be ready to be taken forward and uh, worked on for um, you know more development and processing. So I would like to wrap up now, and hopefully you have now started to begin to understand um, how to use luminosity masks first by generating the luminosity channels based off in a composite RGB image then how we can use those channels to generate and create custom masks to be used in conjunction with adjustment layers and also then take some any one of those um, channels and customize it further for more targeted adjustments to suit our needs so once again thank you very much for watching and I will catch you in the next go round